What is up, Scrub fam? We are back with another Series 9 video. This time we're going to be doing a deck profile and discussing the green-yellow successor archetype. And we're going to be starting off with Cell Leader. Major reason why is because there's been a lot of controversy around this leader. Uh, people are trying to determine if the deck is good, if the leader is good, um, or if the leader is just bad or terrible. Uh, before I get started, let me give a shout-out to my sponsor, Alec Pastrana, Beer Collectibles, best shop owner on the planet. If you're looking to get your sealed product, make sure you go through Alec Pastrana and Beer Collectibles. They'll get you covered with the best deals, best prices, best customer service you can possibly find. So please go and get your pre-orders in now so you can get your product on time ahead of the game. So, anyway, first things first, Cell Leader. Talked about it before in my last video, but activate being on the front side, look at the top five cards, choose any one card, put it in your hand, then choose one card in your hand and place it in your drop area. We can search, uh, choose one green and one yellow card, place it under this leader, draw two cards, flip this card over, and untap two energy. And on the back, you have an activate main, where you can take one of the cards, put it under, put it in the drop area, and you can either make it for your entire ne opponent's next turn, all their battle cards come until they rest it, or uh, you can choose it to one of their battle cards, KO it, and then also they discard a card. So, is the leader good on its own? Um, I think the leader isn't a generically good leader. I think the leader is really good and, and rewards you if you are playing a deck that synergizes, that has synergies with the drop area, which is why all the cards that came out in this set to support this archetype synergize with the drop area. But also remember that looking at the top five and choosing any one card, yes, you're not drawing a card for the turn. Like, you're not plussing. And I know people like harp on that a lot, like you're not getting a plus off of it. But what you are doing is you're increasing your card quality. So every single time that you're getting to look at the top five and choose an actual card, you're at least drawing at like half of a card or a third of a card um, each turn because you're upgrading the quality of your hand and you're upgrading the quality of your, your drop area, which this deck needs to do in order to be able to function. So is the leader bad? No. Is Do I think the generic, leader's generically powerful? No. Do I think the leader is a great complementary leader to a strategy? Absolutely. And that's where we're going to be going in this deck profile today. Uh, I am taking a stab at the cell chain engine. I think so far with the successor stuff, I have a really good setup right now. Was able to play a little, a few some games last night, do some test draws as well, and everything seems to be flowing really well together. And there's some things that you're going to note about what you're going to want to do in the deck that is not necessarily something you want to think about or, or you have thought about before. So let's go ahead and get started on the deck profile itself. So first things first, I'm the realist. Also, we're gonna start with Quick Sweep Android 17. So basically, the key to this card, if you have no battle cards in your in your battle area, you can actually play this card from your drop area just for one green. And then if you have a sell card in play, you increase the cost by two, so it becomes a three. Major reason why you're playing this card in your deck, number one, has synergy with your drop area. So think of this card, sell. Um, you have the, the ape Goku in the deck as well. And you have the Android 18 you can play from the drop area as well. Those cards are basically, they're not blanks, but they're just cards that function better in your drop area. So let's say you have an opening hand with one or multiple of these pieces. You're gonna look at the top five. You're gonna pick a relevant strong card. You're gonna put it in your hand. You're gonna put this card that is not relevant in your hand in the drop area. Makes sense? So essentially you are gonna be upgrading your card quality tenfold, but also keeping your game plan going forward because your drop area is an extension of your hand in this deck. So we're playing four of those Android 17s and we're playing four of the cells. Cell requires that you only have Android 17 battle cards in play. Reason why is because it's trying to be really thematic. So you're gonna have to go Android 17 first. Cell is gonna absorb Android 17. So basically you have to play Cell second to Android 17. And then you can successor into, imper into Imperfect Cell or, or Not So Perfect Cell. Uh, and so this is one of the ways that this deck enables that is using this chain. One thing that's cool about the Cell Android Absorber is like, let's say for instance, it is on the battlefield and your opponent uses like a counterplay card to KO it, uh, or uses a card to KO it in general, you get to get an Android 18 out of the drop area. And so we can move over to Android 18 now. This is why I have the choices. Um, we have just the, the green yellow one, which the reason why this deck can play so many 10Ks is honestly, this card alone helps mitigate that issue because since your hand size stays usually around five to six, you're always going to be able to trigger that ability where you can reduce the combo cost by one so it becomes a free 10 gate combo which is kind of dope and we also play one deadly defender just for that tech just for the ability to be able to put it in the drop area and then be able to get it into play if your cell were to die so important thing to note there so again chain you go android 17 out first sell second then you pay your green and your yellow sack both then you can play cell devour of the masses 
When this card comes into play, you can KO a battle card ignoring barrier, and then your opponent puts one card in their hand in the drop area. Also, the kicker is, if this card is the die for any reason, like get KO'd by opponent's skill, um, you get to draw three cards, or it's KO'd in battle, you get to draw three cards. So this card, if it just sits there, is going to be able to generate value for you because you can turn it sideways if you want. And most more often than not, yeah, like now, yeah, that's not barrier, but at least you're setting yourself up to like recoup some of those cards that you're looking to get. So that is one piece of the chain. And then once you have this six cost cell in play, you then get an Android 18 into play because Android 18 says it can come into play if you only have cell cards, put it into play, and then you can go into successor nine, which is the big cell. Which this cell says, when you play this card using successor, you look at your opponent's hand, choose three cards, place them in your drop area. Very powerful effect. Exactly what you want in a card that's supposed to help you finish the game. And so that is how you access the night drop cell. Another thing to note is that since this deck is successor, you can, you know, success, cell successor nine, you can actually just play a cell after a cell to turn later. And what's cool is if you play the Broly SCR from a few sets ago from set six, then you can actually play the Broly SCR the same exact turn that you successor over your successor since you're killing something that costs seven or more, which is a cool thing to note. I mean, we don't know what the secret rares are for this set, but I think I, ideally this is a secret rare that makes a lot of sense. So Broly SCR has some synergies with that. So that is one of your ways to do the cell chain. And so I know everyone's thinking right now, like, okay, well, what am I gonna do about drawing cards? How am I gonna draw cards? Well, self-awakening is incredibly important to doing this. And you get to play two cards in your deck specifically, which I love. You get to play Sun Gohan, Master and People, which basically green, and then at the end of your opponent's next turn, you can take one to two life, put it in your hand and play this card. And then also Android 15, which is just a combo into play card. And then you can either choose one or two life out of your hand. And then it also states that if you combo on your opponent's turn that comes into play, you get to untap one of your green energy. So two self-awakening cards. And I'm playing six self-awakening cards, three of each. Another thing to note, each of these costs three. This is important in decks like this, like the magic number, because all my successor cards are either six or nine. So I want to use multiples of threes to make this happen. So if you look around the deck itself, everything that you're talking about that we're playing is mostly threes. So the Android 15 and the Gohan play into that strategy. Same thing with Chomp the Trickster and Vegeta the Cruel. They're both threes. So getting one of these into play early, getting both of these into play early, allows you to punish your opponent by using counterplays. And at the same exact time, you're getting to play one of your successor cards on time. Because since it adds up to the number six, you're gonna be able to get it. And also we have another way to cheat it out with SS Broly All at Assault. Same thing, cost six. You're gonna be able to get it out relatively easily. So let's say you play the six drop Broly, you play a counterplay, boom, you have nine, you can go into successor nine on your fourth turn. And one thing to note about Cell is once you're once you're setting up this board and once you get to your awaken side every single time you use your activate main to make it so all your opponent's battle cards come into play in rest mode you're essentially time walking them for the entire turn and that's what this deck needs this deck needs that ability to now start resolving multiple successor cards across multiple turns in a row and that's how it's going to close out the game that's how it's going to make sure that i can stop the opponent from recruiting any sort of advantage because you're basically gonna take away the value that they get for playing their battle cards. And so that reduces a lot of the pressure that's on you. So that's another thing to note about the strategy in this deck. Um, more often than not, I use the activate main to make all their battle cards come into play rested because it's not as good as Jiren's ability to take a life and then not take damage for the duration of the turn. But it is good in a sense that no matter what your opponent plays, their only thing they're really going to be able to attack with is any battle cards that are on the field already, plus their leader. That's it. And then so that's less things for you to defend. Our negates, we're of course playing Flying Nimbus, still one of the best negates in the game. Um, we're playing four pair to super combo. You could you could opt into playing the Juro super combo, but I really just don't think that super combo is that good. Another thing that you could do if you want to take this deck more defensively is you could play the Zamasu super combo, which is incredibly high on right now. I think it's one of the best defensive cards in the game. I think it just helps you sure up so many aggressive matchups because you can just punish them for going in so hard or, or relying on one big attacker to kind of close the deal. And you can make their attacks with their leader and their battle cards really awkward. So I love that card too. So, but for now, Paragus, because you want to be able to get through the deck and find key pieces, find the successor targets. We're playing two of the apes, like I said before, put it in the drop area, and it's extra value across the course of the game. Just being able to give yourself something to sink your energy into to draw two cards, just a very powerful effect. But overall, this is my first shot at the Cell successor deck. I'm pretty certain as we get the final previews, 
whatever the SCRs are, we're going to see some edits. And I think that this is the place that I'm going to start right now and going to continue going moving forward. Um, you saw today on the Patreon that Frisco's Tricolor Surge deck went up for Gajita Hurovai. The deck is, in, is insane. Very strong. Uh, Pat is going to be writing our has an article written for the Patreon tomorrow going over Invoker. So we have a ton of content coming out with Series 9. We are all back on the horse. We are trying to make the best content possible for everyone. I'm going to go ahead and put the link to the Patreon down in the description as well as the link to beardedcollectibles.com and then also a link to this deck list so you can go ahead and take a look at it. Go ahead and clone it. Put it in your Shinran Slayer deck builder so you can keep editing, tuning, and then playing some games on Untap and then hopefully Octagon here soon. Thank you guys so much for everything. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. If you get a chance, tell your friends about it. If they aren't subscribed, make them scrub, scribe. Anyway, scrub fam is best fam. K, bye!